Welcome to Formula One 2012. Hello and welcome to the fabulous Yas Marina circuit here in Abu Dhabi, the location for this year's Young Driver Test. Over the next two days, we'll go behind the scenes as we watch the teams put the next generation of potential Formula One drivers through a series of tests to uncover the next superstar. Ask any of the team principals whether outright speed is the sole requirement and they'll tell you that consistency, feedback and attitude are equally important. Still a few record times wouldn't hurt a driver's chances of securing a seat for next season. And right on cue, the first engine of the day has fired into life right below my commentary box. So I think we'll soon see a car out on track. Hey, good to see you again. As your race engineer, it's my job to support you this weekend. When you're out on track, we'll remain in contact via radio. I'll feed you information as and when you need it. As discussed in the team briefing, we're not looking for outright speed to begin with, so just take your time. Follow my instructions and you'll do great. I'll just check the lads are ready. We'll attach comms when you're in the car. OK, let's get you strapped in. OK, let's run through the basic controls and ensure the guys have set the car correctly so that you're comfortable. First, let's check that the accelerator and brake pedals are a good fit. Great, let's check the steering lock next. Move the wheel from left to right for me. Next up are the gears. The box is either manual or automatic, but you can override the auto at any time by using the gear up and down controls. Pull the right paddle to go up a gear and the left paddle to come down. Okay, everything looks good. We're going to do a simple straight line aero run first. Let me know when you're ready to head out. Ready. OK, before we start, I want to let you know that you can change the camera position by pressing the Change Camera button. Try cycling through them until you find the one you like. If you want to change your camera or assists, you can do it from the pause menu whenever you want. The first test is a simple straight line aero test. Head down the track, accelerating past 160 miles per hour, then brake so that you come to a complete stop in the designated area. The engine is locked to lean, so it's down a little on power at the moment, but it'll give us a consistent reading. <laughs> Data and you're on the brakes at just the right time.
Modern Formula One cars have around 750 brake horsepower being sent to the rear wheels. The delivery can be very violent, so you must be careful to be smooth and precise with all your inputs so that you don't unsettle the car and cause a spin. At speed, the car's aerodynamics generate a lot of downforce, forcing the car to the track. To work efficiently with downforce, you should put a lot of force into the brake pedal initially, slowly reducing the pressure as they turn in for the corner, as you'll have less grip at this stage and be asking the tyres to work harder. When navigating a corner, stay as wide as possible before sweeping in to clip the corner's apex, taking as straight a line as possible. This allows you to get on the accelerator earlier and straighten up the car on the exit of the corner until you're confident the rear wheels will no longer spin at which point you can use full power. All complete, we're ready. For this test, we need you to accelerate towards the hairpin corner, turn in at the correct point, hit the apex, and accelerate past 185 miles per hour out of the corner. We need you to stop in the designated area at the end of the straight to complete the test. Looks like a tire blowout. time. Hit the flashback button to restart the action before... You missed the apex, you might want to give it another go. We need you to accelerate towards the hairpin corner, turn in at the correct point, hit the apex, and accelerate past 185 miles per hour out of the corner. We need you to stop in the designated area at the end of the straight to complete the test. want to give it another go. For this test, we need you to accelerate towards the hairpin corner, turn in at the correct point, hit the apex, and accelerate past 185 miles per hour out of the corner. We need you to stop in the designated area at the end of the straight to complete the test. Data. Your line and corner speeds are good. Complete. Ready. Okay. Time to try stringing together a couple of corners. Turn in so you hit the corner's apex and get on the gas early as you exit. It'll be against the clock this time, so we've turned the engine up to normal. We need you to stop in the designated area at the end of the straight to complete the test.
We've got some good data. Your line and corner speeds are good. Kurz delivers an additional 80 brake horsepower to the rear wheels at the press of a button. It can be used in short bursts or all at once for around 7 seconds per lap. Kurz can be used at any time in any session and can be used for overtaking or defending. Deploying Kurz in the low gears gives the best return and can pay off greatly when used at the start. The Kurz charge will automatically refill every lap, but the Kurz system can at times develop faults. However, these can be fixed while the driver is still out on track. DRS adjusts the angle of the rear wing, which reduces drag and gives around 10 to 12 km per hour extra top speed. It can only be used in defined activation points during the race when you're within one second of the car in front. It can be used whenever the driver wants in practice or qualifying, but only when dry tyres are fitted. And that's the end of day one of the Young Drivers Test here at Abu Dhabi. Join us tomorrow for day two. OK, here we are, a lap of Monza, the fastest track we go to all season. Make sure you get a good balance on this lowest downforce configuration that we run throughout the entire F1 calendar. On the run out of the last corner, make sure you get a nice clean exit, DRS open and a boost occurs as well. Look out for the 200 metre board into turn one. You want to break just after that because it's ever so easy to lock up the front or the rear end. Right hand, then left. Don't touch those curbs too much. You don't want to upset the balance and lose that traction on the exit as well. It's easy to wheel spin there. Before coming into the Curva Grandi, full throttle six, and then up into seventh gear. Now eyes to the bridge in front, use that as a reference, get the car over to the right hand side and brake just after the 100 meter board. Don't use too much of the curb, so you want to attack them relatively aggressively because you want to keep that momentum on the run out that corner towards the two Lesmos. Nice cambered in corner that helps the balance of the car. Not too much exit curb before the next Lesmo corner comes up at you pretty fast. Now onto this nice winding straight round this left hand corner. It's bumpy here. You feel the force going through your spine as the track compresses now up the hill towards the Ascari chicane break and down three gears you want to use all of the left hand curb available to open up the right hug the inside corner flick the car to the left and look to the right hand side use that extra piece of tarmac to help carry the momentum down towards the parabolica now ease the car over to the left hand side you can use this piece of concrete as a reference where to break before this brilliant corner the parabolica the car often understeers here mid corner but you can help that out by using the DRS opening up that rear wing that helps the balance and sends you on your way to finish the lap here in Monza. Your rival has been confirmed as Jean-Eric Verne.
qualifying is about to start here in Italy, so without further ado, let's get straight into the action. on the grid, quite a few places lower than we wanted. Ready. <laughs> 
Everybody's wondering who might have the measure of their rival. Let's find out. Show the team that you mean business. Let's make sure we finish the race ahead of your rival.
three seconds.